Well, hello, everyone. Chilly enough for you out there? Wow. It is. I don't know who turned on the air conditioning, but here in Ontario, it was like 14 degrees. And then at the end of the day, it was like snowstorm and black ice for me driving home from Toronto. I was like, my husband's it, like, please hurry up and come home. I'm like, it was been crazy. I know. Yeah, I know. See, but but spring is upon us. Yeah. Lovely we need to hear from you now. By how quick the dog is in and out, right? If your yes. dog is really quick, then we need more clothes. <laughs> I know my, my puppy has decided she loves the spring because now she's, I guess, 13, 14 weeks. And so she loves the spring. And then she was playing with all the grass and the snow shut up again. She was like barely putting her feet in. She was like standing at the door like, no, mom, no, don't make me go. I'm like, yes, you are going outside. You are going outside. She's such a sweet puppy. Yeah. We're, she's a whole four and a half pounds now. She's gotten really big from two pounds. Oh. To like four pounds so you know she's she's massive but she's not really she's still too small for an extra small like harness it's like gosh pocket size purse size still we'll still keep keep that purse going as long as we can Bye for me. safety she needs to sit in a purse perfect uh oh, all right looks like we're all set here we've got uh we're live on Facebook. We've got people joining us here via Zoom, so we're excited to to get started today. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. This session is recorded, so if you want to watch it again later, or if you get pulled away and you're seeing uh, patients today, don't you worry. Um, you will receive an email afterwards with your instructions to get into your personal portals for your certificates. And um, if you have questions along the way, we have a lot of really good information to get through, so we will try our best to address any questions that come in, but feel free to use the chat if you're just sort of saying hi. And then if you could put any questions that you're hoping for an answer, if you could put that in Q&A for us, that just helps us to keep things a little bit more smooth. So I'm mm -hmm. gonna hand it over to Kath. I think that's all the housekeeping I need to say today. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for joining us, everybody. And as Beth said, um, we will send out the recording probably on Monday or Tuesday. So there's no need to email to ask for it. Um, you'll get your certificate and the recording in your portal on Monday or Tuesday. Um, so we're really excited today to have Carrie Lepicek, our co-host of the show, as our special guest. And uh, we, I don't even think you need an introduction, Carrie, because everybody knows you. Um, you've had such a great path. When I think about where, when we first met back in 2016, right? And to see you, how much you've grown over the last, I don't know, how many years is that? Eight years? Yeah. Um, it's been an honor to be on this journey with you. So, so proud of you. And I love all the things that you're interested in and all the passions that you have. Um, and one of them is being oral probiotics. So why don't we kind of start with like, what really got you started um, to be interested in oral probiotics? Well, first off, I would definitely want to talk about oral probiotics, but that's really kind. I know when I think of where I thought I would be and where I am now and that whole journey, it's, you know, you find your passion, you find something that you're excited about and you just want to share it. And so all of us on the panel, you know, we just really want to improve the dental community. We want to improve um, all the patients. We just really want to kind of ignite and excite you guys to really do the best you can. And one of the things that I found early in my career, so I graduated in 2020, uh, 2002. And in 2007, I started uh, my, my conversation and exploring oral probiotics. And it really started with Orovital um, and halitosis treatment. So I actually learned about oral probiotics from Ambozi, who was the founder of, and the inventor of the Orovital system. And she was using at that time in 2007, she was using probiotics to help manage um, her health halitosis patients. And so for me, that was like an eye-opening experience to say, wait a minute, if this helps the halitosis patients, of course, it's going to help my perio patients. And then I started to utilize them in our practice. And I saw that it really did help me by enhancing the treatment options I was providing to my patients. And it gave me an alternative option to offer them. And then last year, I switched uh, companies and products that I was recommending because I've been following this L. Ruderi brand, uh, which we know as oral uh, as BioGaia. Um, for the last five years, I do a lot of education in the U S I've got, you know, I do a lot of stuff down there and I discovered at the Chicago midwinter invention that 
BioGaia Canada is now available. So I was so excited. And the reason I was excited is I've been watching the literature and the science and the clinical studies that really helped me drive my decision making and help me feel confident recommending products to my patients. Um, but before we kind of dive further, I just want to make sure people are aware of what a probiotic really is. And probiotics in general are gaining considerable properties popularity in recent years. And it's because people are focusing more on that mental and well-being. This is really what the patient and the client bases really, really want. And that I am so excited that probiotics are becoming more commonly aware and available for individuals. And that probiotics definitely are widely recognized for improving digestive health and boosting the immune function as well now as helping promote good oral health. And that the only problem is, is that people think that when they take uh, probiotics for their gut, that it's going to also help their mouth. And that's not the case. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit today as well. But I'm happy to be able to educate now professionals and my patients about the benefits and the options and how oral probiotic lozenges can really help benefit their health. And interesting enough, in order to truly be um, defined as a probiotic, the World Health Organization has stated that it has to have live microorganisms that when administered in adequate amounts, definitely have uh, beneficial health effects on the host. And so in order to truly be defined as a probiotic, we need to see that there are clinical trials and clinical data that look at the exact strain of that bacteria and that it is doing something good on the health of your patient. So when you're thinking about selecting your probiotics, when you're thinking about maybe, okay, this is something I want to think about bringing forth to my, my practice, I want you to think about the genus. I want you to think about the strain. I want you to think about the species. What is in that probiotic that makes it unique? And what studies are there there that back up that that strain and that product truly do have health benefits? I think that this is something that is really important for us to bring forth. Wow, that's that's a lot to just even digest right there, Carrie. Holy smokes. Um, so can you further define the difference between like a, a gut probiotic and an oral probiotic so that we can, you know, you know, distinguish when our clients are also saying, well, I, I do that, you know. I I know we hear that all the time. We really do. They think, and they're doing what they think is right, right? That's exactly it. And so I know my good friend, Beth, as you guys all know, loves this topic and loves this section. And I actually think that she's got some wonderful insight to bring to this because she has had such a combined interest in the biofilm in reducing inflammation from looking at the nutritional aspect. And so Beth, why don't you give us your insight on the differences between gut and oral probiotics? Sure. I mean, I'd love to. Um, I think, you know, a lot of us are familiar with terms like leaky gut. Um, mm -hmm. I think even our patients are going to be maybe more familiar with that type of a conversation. And it's what you've both sort of alluded to when we, if after watching this session, after maybe you've already seen uh, other presentations, you've been doing your own reading. So you're at the point where you want to start talking to your patient about taking oral probiotics. When you go to have that conversation, that's likely what someone will say, like, oh, like I've been taking this for years because they take probiotics for their gut, but they take it orally. So when we say oral probiotics, they're like, yeah, what, like you're not, this isn't life-changing science, right? And the research for that started really in the nineties, it really started to take off where we started to look at our gut microbiome and how that was associated with different chronic diseases. And that research in more recent years has just really taken off. And because of that, where it originated, then the oral microbiome started to be more and more studied. But I do think, even though they're very, very different, I think that that is actually a good starting point. So it's a good thing if your patient says, I've been taking that for years, because then they're aware of the bacteria. They are aware that there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. So that's maybe the, maybe that's our foot, like that's where our starting point should be. And then let me just, I have a couple of, I have a couple of images that I like that I actually think might help that conversation. So let me just share that and let's talk a little bit about it. I'm going to start talking about gut health and then let's relate it to our, um, our oral health. So each of us has a very extensive intestinal lining and that covers about 4,000 square feet of surface area. So it's massive. 
And when this is working properly, it forms this really tight barrier. I like to equate it to like our skinny jeans. When we put our skinny jeans on and please don't come at me, my geriatric millennials, please back me up. Skinny jeans are not out. They are going to be in forever and ever. And I will, <laughs> I will die on that hill. But it's like skinny jeans, right? When we take them out of the dryer and we put them on, they're nice and tight, but then they start to kind of loosen up and then they don't fit as well, right? The same thing can happen with our gut lining. We have this really, really tight lining, but different foods, inflammation, toxins can start to cause this inflammation. And then what was previously tight starts to loosen. And then we get these ulcerations that come up like cracks or holes. And that's where different food particles and toxins can actually start to leak into the bloodstream, right? So those start to come in. And this is what people are maybe more familiar with talking about. But if we take that conversation and then we bring it to oral health, it's a similar conversation, right? The oral microbiome has the second largest and most diverse microbiota after our GI tract, right? It harbors about 700 species of bacteria. So it's very, very similar. And if we look at the bacterial aspect on the left side of this image, and then we look to the right side, that represents the ulceration that happens. That's the host response to the initial bacterial infection. Right? So what's happening is now our ul the ulceration of the epithelial lining is creating those holes for those cracks where the toxins, the um, inflammatory mediators, the bacterial components can start to leak into the bloodstream. Right, Then it acts like a slip and slide. Those, all those toxins you were just talking about now have access to wherever the blood flows. So if they're already aware of leaky gut, let's equate it. You know, like We've heard a couple of speakers say leaky, uh, leaky gums. You know, and it's kind of brilliant because that's what it is. So if they're familiar with leaky gut, maybe start there. Okay, let's talk about leaky gums and then have that conversation and explain to them how they're different. So that's my I, kind of rant. <laughs> I think that that's awesome. And I, I think I'm going to steal your skinny jeans analogy and keep, you know, mm -hmm. reusing that because I do think that when we think about that opportunity, it's that stretching, that uh, opening, that, that area that we as dental professionals are trying our best to mitigate and manage when it comes to biofilm a hundred percent. I think that that is, that is ingenious what you've said there. And I do agree that leaky gut is like leaky gums, that that sort of yeah. is that that same conversation. And people can relate to that when you start to use word pictures, word analogies, this is what's going to help motivate your patients to want to buy into what it is that you're selling, which we we work on health every single day. And Carrie, this kind of goes back to like if we're talking about distinguishing between the two, and then taking the gut bacteria, or the the um, the gut pre probiotics, they're digesting it orally. But the thing is, and I was hoping that you could sort of talk to us a little bit more. You already alluded to the fact that there's different genus strain that we need to pay attention to that. And I think that the one thing that they may not understand is when they're ingesting, so they're just taking it, so they're swallowing their probiotics. Those probiotic strains are specific to the gut, so they can survive the harsh uh, stomach acid. Whereas if you are swallowing a probiotic that is for the oral cavity, that strain isn't going to necessarily survive the harsh stomach acids. So maybe if you could talk to us a little bit more about the you alluded to it, but if you could go in a little bit more talking about the strains and what that actually means, and then how we can have those conversations with our patients, that would be great. I think that that's awesome. And so I love this image about how do you make the right choice? It's like, there are so many options out there. And I think if, if you were to choose a straw for me, I think, I think I know which one people would choose probably either the twirly whirly one or the one that's, you know, got the, the, the little lines going around, but you know, each one has its benefit. And I think you've got to look at what it is you're trying to do for your patients and make sure that your treatment options, whether it be probiotics or other things are alluding and are following that direction for your patients. And so when it comes to probiotics, what I want you to think about is someone actually ironically uh, put in the chat that they have, I think they said a great Dane and a chinchilla or something like that. I'm like, how funny is that? I'm like, did she see my slides? Does she know that those are the <laughs> animals that I have coming through? But the truth of it is, when you are looking at um, the uh, probiotic options, what you really need to do is to really get down deep and know exactly what it is that you're dealing with. So as a veterinarian, great that I deal with animals, but if I don't know the difference between a dog and a cat, 
the treatment options are going to be different. And I need to know specifically what kind of dog is that? Is it a pug? Is it a Great Dane? Each one of those are going to have different reactions and different responses to the treatment and therapies that we have. And so when it comes down to looking at all products, whether it be probiotics, rinses, all of these things, make sure you know what's in your products. Make sure that you're looking at that particular um, strain or species, get down to that strain level, know exactly what type of animal you're treating. So therefore then you can look at the literature and say, does that um, strain work for the condition or indication that I'm trying to treat? That's really where it comes down to it as we go through. And so when we think about the strain specificity, and I can't say those words, you guys all know, I try to say really hard words some days and they just don't come out. But when it comes to these strains, I want you to look at that literature, look at the data and see what is backing by it. The L. ruteri strain uh, 5289 and 19, uh, 17983 have got so much literature and research there when you start looking at it um, that have been well documented for gingivitis, for perio, for implant, for caries, for candida. And so this is why I've been sitting there on the sidelines, just waiting and hoping soon that one day it'll come through and that we'll be able to have it here in Canada. So I am really excited to be kind of pushing this forward and bringing this information there because there is a significant difference when you look at the strains of these bacteria. So take a look, if you're recommending probiotics, look at what it covers, look at the indication and look at the, the literature. So the two products that I, the two strains that I love are the l Ruteri, the l Ruteri 5298 and the l Ruteri 17938. Interesting enough that these two strains, uh, when you look at it all, they were actually, um, the history of them is quite fascinating. So the first one, the 17938, uh, was actually isolated from human breast milk and has anti-inflammatory properties, which is pretty fascinating when I think about that. The other strain, the uh, 5298, uh, is actually isolated from saliva. And fascinating enough, they found this in a lady that literally had horrible hygiene habits, but had beautiful teeth and gums. And what they did is they looked at her saliva and they looked at the different strains that were there and tried to figure out what those protective factors were. And what they found is that this strain of L. ruteri literally had anti-inflammatory uh, properties and inhibits the inflammatory cytokines. And so what they've done is they have put these together and now we have BioGaia Pro Dentist. And so this line is what really makes uh, BioGaia different. And this is a unique way of bringing these two strains together to get the uh, treatment and the effectiveness that we're looking for to help move our patient's oral health and to help get them from dysbiosis to symbiosis and help to bridge in some of those gaps, fill in those skinny jeans, be that dryer that pulls everything together. Okay, there we go. There's the first analogy, ding, 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 number one for Carrie. Okay, so moving forward uh, in Carrie and Beth fashion, I had this slide already in my, my slide deck that I wanted to share with you. And when we think about the l ruteri and we think about some of the amazing benefits, really, what it is, is we need to look at how it can impact our patient's oral health. And the four things it can do, it helps with the um, adherence. And in that respect, it really is able to adhere to the biofilm surfaces. It helps inhibit the TNFA, which is really uh, the pro-inflammatory cytokines. And the other thing it else helps with is it has microbial substance ruterin in it. And finally, it helps to fill in those gaps. It is that dryer in the for your genes to help keep everything together, to help reduce that leakiness in your gums. Um, and ultimately, all of this makes this product work really well for your patients. But the question I always get is, well, why should I change? Why now? What, what is the difference? Well, you know, in true carry Foreman, it's really about those pathogens. We need to reduce that pathogens. We have to rebalance the microbiome. We can't eliminate it all, right? We have to balance it out, everybody. And dentistry focuses on this aspect. And the nice thing is that we are moving more to that wellness. And so when we think about it, you know, when we think about looking at or after your oral health, it's similar to doing your, your fitness training. And so when I think about it from a hygiene perspective, what I want to bring out there is I really think that 
when it comes to who needs this and who doesn't, when we look at it, it's about assessing where that client's at. And that is in our dental hygiene assessment, right? Where are they at? What are we doing with our assessment? This is critical. We need to look for calculus. We need to look for bleeding. We need to look for, for disease. And then we need to create a plan of action. And just like your treatment, when you're when you're working out, you're going to have an assessment for your, your fitness. Then you're going to come up with a treatment plan and what that looks like. Are you going to be rowing? Are you going to be doing CrossFit? Are you going to be doing sit-ups? What does that look like? And for us, it looks like the treatment options we have. So we scale and root plane. We Maybe we use lasers. Maybe we use bacterial testing. Maybe we utilize probiotics as options. And then we need to reassess and see where they're at. And this is really that journey as we're bringing it together because probiotics I have found to really, in my patients, I've seen this, it promotes healthy gums and teeth. It reduces plaque buildup. It helps with those gingivitis patients and it reduces the risk of developing caries. And again, this is why we want to sort of think about bringing it forward. And that reduction on an association with strep mutans is something that is kind of exciting for me. As you know, I love my pathogens. And so when it comes to this, the L-ruterine is actually able to inhibit um, the pathogens. And so this was something that really drove me to read the science and the literature. So I know when we start thinking about it as dental professionals don't always love to read those scientific journals and scientific articles, but you know, this is where sometimes we can thrive, where we can feel confident recommending the decisions that we are and standing and backing behind the products that we're, we're bringing forth to our patients. So when it comes to your literature, I want you to think about it when it comes to probiotics and when it comes to anything, what type of studies have been published? And so Beth and Anna Louise always talk about this and talk about the different kinds of studies that are brought forth. And so we need to look at those studies and we need to make sure we're making evidence-based decisions and let the science and the literature help show us and guide us in our options. And so what I found fascinating, what, what compelled me to shift products and to shift into this section was really the clinical studies. And so not all oral probiotic companies have a lot of oral studies. And so interesting enough, the BioGaia team have 63 devoted clinical studies for oral environment. And so this was something that was so exciting. They have a random double blind, they have placebo, they have open labels, they have lots of different types of studies that are there. And they have 10 studies that were done on gingivitis. They've got per ones on perio, peri-implant diseases, mucositis, caries, you name it. There's a lot of literature there that help back up the decision. And so I wanted to share with you guys today some of the studies that I found really fascinating. And so this one um, was published in 2010. And what this uh, study looked at is it looked at the um, it looked at the L. ruteri in ProDentist, and it looked at it with regards to scaling and root planing. So in this, it was a double blind random placebo controlled trial, um, and the patients had chronic perio disease. And what they had in this situation is they had 19 males and um, 19 males and 11 females between the age of 34 and 50. And the study looked at them over a 42 day period. And what they did, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, I don't know, Anna Louise or, if you, or Beth or Kath, if you've read any articles like this, but what they did is they actually divided the mouth into two halves. So half of it got scaling and root planing and the other half did not. And then they administered the l uh, probiotic. And they did a comparison after and said, okay, what happened? And so that was really a neat way to kind of look and to see on that individual, did the sites that had the l ruteri and the scaling root planing improve more than just the scaling and root planing alone? And what they found was something that really excited me because guess what they found? They found reductions of pathogens, particularly in the groups that had scaling and root planing and the l ruteri and so this is one of those examples where we see changes and improvements to our scaling and root planning with the use of uh, probiotics and ProDentist particularly. Um, and so there was definitely a significant improvement in the gingival, um, in the gingival um, uh, pathogen loads. 
Another thing is, I know we have a lot of uh, patients, a lot of personal, everyone has a connection to somebody in a nursing home. And so this study was kind of compelling to me because it looked at candida. And I have been looking at candida since I started looking at salivary diagnostics back in 2007. And what it found is that from utilizing the uh, L. ruteri uh, prodentis line two times a day for 12 weeks, um, they found significant reductions in candida load in these senior patients. And they looked at 215 individuals. And this was, again, a double-blind random placebo group. Um, and the best thing is, is they just had to use a lozenge twice a day, one in the morning and one at night. Um, and what they found is they really found that there was a reduction in the prevalence of candida in these fragile nursing home residents. And so we all, you know, there's so many people that are doing such great things and we have limited use in some of the nursing homes. When we go in there, we don't have the opportunity to bring everything with us. But what if we kind of talk to our patients? Because I love talking to my patients when I find that someone's in a nursing home. I'm like, hey, when you go there, can you brush their teeth? Can you take this mouth rinse? I think Anna Louise has shared similar stories like that, right? It's like, what if we could empower our patients to look after their parents better to help, you know, everything overall? And so some of this data really really compelled me. And I can see Anna Louise like, yeah, I can see her. She's like, yeah, totally. Right. And so this is where and why I have been compelled by it. The other thing is caries. So what do we know about candida? We know that candida and caries are directly kind of connected, right? With strep mutans. So we've already highlighted a bit today about the reduction of strep mutans and we have reduction of yeast. Well, guess what else we can have? We can have a reduction overall of caries. And so this was a really uh, interesting uh, study. This was um, a single blind placebo controlled study. And what it looked at is it looked at the reduction um, of risk for caries in children and the number of uh, caries individuals. But what happened is the moms in the last trimester were given the uh, L. ruteri. And what happened is they asked them to use in the last trimester and for the baby's first year of life. And then they looked at them nine years later, and this is what they found. They found that the patients that had the L. ruteri in those early infant stages had a significant reduction in the risk of caries. And so this is really where um, we can have impact. And the nice thing is that this product, there aren't many out there that do studies on pregnant women. And so this is something that is safe for them because how many times do we have those patients that have pregnancy gingivitis, right? And they're looking for options or looking for the natural choice. And this is a great way to repopulate and to help seed and reduce risk of caries and, of course, gingivitis. I know Beth and I, whenever we do our slide decks, we have similar articles and we fight over who's going to talk about what. And so when we did our little huddle this morning to kind of go through a few things for today, uh, we both had this one that she's like, you make sure you talk about this. I'm like, yes. And the reason I think that this study is fascinating is that this one is looking at um, sailors and it's looking at 72 uh, sailors that were um, that were um, at sea. And it looked at it as a uh, opportunity to implement the L. ruteri strain. And they had it for 42. Uh, they, they were using it for a period of time. And what they found is that at the end of utilizing the L. ruteri is that at day uh, 42, there was a significant reduction in the percentage of bleeding sites in these sailors. Um, and we know um, that in many situations that, you know, sometimes all that people can do is implement one thing. And maybe this is an easy um, option that all they have to do is have this lozenge twice a day, and we're going to see reductions in bleeding points as we're going through. But this study really just sort of, again, made me uh, think about how many people are deployed, how many people are, you know, don't have access to care. And so if there's an opportunity in a way that we can get things like this into some of their hands, into their products, how could that potentially impact and, and benefit? I just think that these sorts of things are, are really quite compelling um, as we're going through. Beth, is there anything else you want to highlight on this study? Because I know that this one is something that you, you enjoy this one as well. Oh, you're muted. 
Amateur. <laughs> I think you delivered it really, really well. The, the the thing that stood out to me a lot with this study is is that what's so specific about the sailors is that you're you're taking them out of their norm and you're putting them into like tentatively stressful situation. So it might not be that your patients are going to be sailing off at sea for you know 30, 30 days, but they could be entering into a stage or a period of stress, or they could be temporarily not able to get into their normal routines and that is going to affect their oral health. So I love that this study took people who are being taken out of their normal routines. It's not going to be as easy for them to practice good oral hygiene. So say, you know what I mean? If you had a sailor in your chair and you're giving them a laundry list of things that you want them to do when they're at sea, that might not be possible. So although that's the ideal, it's like, okay, what is this patient willing to do? What can they do realistically? So I love that they took such an extreme situation and then we can make that applicable to the patient that we have in our chair. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So another uh, study that I wanted to share is we always um, are concerned with our perio patients. And so again, the literature, when I looked at the, the science and the data behind here, what was really compelling in this meta-analysis is it looked at three different clinical studies. And I want to mention that all of these groups had scaling and root planning done first, and then they either had a placebo or they had the l uh, suggested. Mm -hmm. um, they looked at probing depths. They looked at uh, clinical attachment levels. Two of the three studies, there was significant improvement in the probing depths across all pockets, but one of them did not show significance in all pocket areas. Um, and you can see from this table, the improvements in all areas, but not all factors are studied in all three publications. And so you are going to see from utilizing these sorts of uh, probiotics, um, you know, there was, there were studies that showed the reduction of need for surgery, uh, reduction of leading on probing, uh, clinical attachment levels, uh, uh, probing pockets and moderate pocket depth changes. And so what's really interesting here is that, you know, the clinical, the clinical influence of probiotics as an adjunct, okay, it's an adjunct to scaling and root planning to our debridement um, compared to just scaling and root planning alone. It, we didn't see that we, we didn't see as much with just scaling and root planning. So kind of taking your program from better to best this is another option that you can bring in that the patient can utilize at home. And so I do think that utilizing these across the board is really important. And then they do have a lot of research as well about implants. And Anna Louise is our expert on the panel here about implants for sure. But we know that more and more patients are having implants, right? We, back in the day, it was like one a week. And now it's like every day, it's like, do I have enough scalers? Do I have enough tools in my, that sterilize that I can truly utilize this, right? I'm sure Anna Louise, I think probably every one of your patients have one in, in the practice that you, you work in, right? <laughs> It, pretty close, pretty close. It's definitely, um, yeah, uh, um, we see more and more and, and we see multi um, implants, right? Big uh, superstructures that are like the whole arch is suspended on implants. And that's becoming more the norm, right? It the is. And it's are, are very limited. They are. And you know what? The good news is patients are choosing the Rolls, Rolls Royce of dentistry. That's really the implants. When they when they spend the time, they spend the money, they want to know about all the alternatives and all the options. And so this is just one of those additional adjuncts. We have to do our traditional therapy. We've got to do good surgery. But if this is something that can really help improve the longevity and just kind of give them that opportunity, build that immune system up in their mouth, that microbiome, so it can be more of a defender and not a destructor, this is really where we want to be. Because I thought that this was a really fascinating study. And so in this figure, it was a random uh, control trial. And they found that they had an 88% reduction in peri-implant pocket depths. But what I found fascinating were the three different groups. So in this, we had one group that had just l twice a day for 21 days. They had a second group, which had a uh, non-surgical, sorry, let me go back. The first group had non-surgical periotherapy and the l -ruteri. The second group had non-surgical periotherapy and antibiotics. And the third group only had non-surgical periotherapy. And so at the three months, what they found is that the two groups that were given the l 
um, definitely had a more of a significant reduction in the pocket depths and that antibiotics definitely are helpful in preventing and treating infection, but not all patients want to utilize them. And so this is another option that we can kind of bring in that we can use as an adjunct to help us get into that corrective manner to help us sort of rebuild and repopulate the good microbiome as we're going through. And so it is something that I find um, in addition, some of my patients, we do recommend antibiotics too, but what we're also following it up with is after the antibiotic is the probiotic after the treatment of the antibiotics to really help get the full use of that as we're going through. And so, you know, there is so much literature and so much um, science behind it. And that really is what compels me with a lot of the decisions that I make moving forward to help my patients. That really has been um, one of the, the driving forces of it. Mm -hmm. Carrie, it just seems like we could have everybody on oral probiotics. So can you help us identify which patients would benefit and then how would they administer them properly? I think that those are good questions. And just like any product, sometimes like, oh my gosh, everybody. So what I usually say to people is choose, choose a lane and start with a selected target group. So maybe your target group in your practice is going to be implants. Maybe your target group is going to be decay. Maybe your target group is going to be those perio patients. Because I think that when you look at the literature of this, it really is very broad as far as broad, not in a bad way, but broad as in there's lots of uses of it, but you don't want to get uh, bogged down in that. And so what I would say is focus on the inflammation to me, as you know, and all of us on this panel, we know inflammation is one of those driving forces. So when you see inflammation, we want to reduce that leaky area, want to reduce those paper cuts and help to heal over that. And this might be the best plug to help reduce it. And then the other thing is, if your patients have concerns with halitosis, maybe it's from an imbalance of biofilm, maybe this can be enough to help kind of code it over to help reduce that aspect. Um, it is very easy to use. Um, what we're going to ask patients to do is to uh, brush their teeth, clean in between them. And as we know, we love like the biofilm removal, proxy brushes, interproximal things, soft picks, those sorts of, those sorts of options to help reduce the biofilm. And then they suck on the lozenge. The lozenge itself, let it dissolve. Try not to chew it up. We want it to sort of really dissolve in the mouth. And the good thing is, is they have two flavors, a really nice mint one. And um, it is a mint and there is an apple flavor. So we have choices for kids as well as for adults. Um, and then after the mint, just like anything, I always tell my patients nothing to eat or drink for 30 minutes after so that way then it has a chance to dissolve and it has a chance to really work moving forward. Could they take it right before bed and then just go to bed, go to sleep? I think that that is the ideal way. But again, sometimes for people that's just doesn't work in their schedule. So if it happens to be the middle of the day as I have them literally sitting on my desk. So sometimes I'm like, okay, how much can I seriously snack? Stop snacking. Let's, let's have it at the, during the day. So ideally, yes, I think you're right. At nighttime is the best way to go about it. And the nice thing I saw a comment come in, it's like, is this available now in Canada? And it is, it is finally now here um, available in Canada. And Kathleen is going to share a little bit later as to how you can order it. The other question I saw come in twice already, and I'm going to just jump on it yeah. if it's okay, is how long do people need to use it? And so the truth of it is the liter the, the package read, go by the labor labels. The labels usually say about um, a month. Um, but what I find is I like to have mine on at least a three month cycle. And so at their next hygiene appointment, after that reeval, I like to sort of assess to see, do they really need to use it? And so it really depends on, um, it really depends on their indications and the severity of the disease we're treating as to the length of time that they will be utilizing it. Okay. Okay, so can you explain to us like how we work this into the ad pie situation? Like, you know, we you've talked to us about assessing, we've got target groups. Okay, now we're gonna put it into our treatment plan. So how do we just do, do those steps and then, how how are we going to instruct them to use it? Like take us through the the pie part. Walk us through that process exactly. Add pie. Okay, ready? Here we go. Um, I think that that is really like the literature compels us. Okay, but now it's like the nitty gritty of what do we really do? How do I actually take this? Because it's a great product. How do I do it? So assessment. 
it really comes down as you know, we almost all of us on this panel love that assessment. We all have a piece of, of a conversation in our lectures about that. But it's really about sort of assessing those patients, looking for inflammation, identifying risk levels. Um, and from there, what we're going to do is based on that risk level, we're going to come up with that treatment plan. And so probiotics are just part of our treatment plan. It's not the treatment plan. And so maybe you have lasers in your practice. Maybe you've got GPT. Maybe you're going to take bacterial swabbing and sampling. And so what you want to do is put all of these treatment options you have on a play, on a tray and then decide what is right for that individual. So probiotics are something that is added onto. It's an easy takeaway for your patients. It is also something that in order to get, I feel like the best benefit of them, we really want to make sure that they are doing their part with home care to the best of their ability. They don't have to be perfect. As we talked about sailors and we talked about some people in a nursing home, there would be dexterity issues, a lot of things that way, but we want to give them some of those right tools. So, you know, what in, on our treatment plan looks like, maybe we want to re remind them about the brushing and the oscillating, rotating brushes. Maybe we want to bring in water flossing and options, but if you're recommending a water flosser, you want to make sure they do it before they do their lozenge. Otherwise, they're literally going to wash away all of the product and wash away all of the benefits of that product. And I have this conversation with a lot of hygienists and sometimes they forget. They're like, but I love water flossers. I'm like, I know, but you just had them use that really expensive Prevident toothpaste. And then you had the water floss right after and they just washed it all away. So maybe let's think about the, the, the notion and, and how it all works. Cause the idea is that that probiotic is going to sit in there for at least ideally 30 minutes undisturbed after that is our hope and our goal. So back to the ad pie. So we want to assess, identify what that risk is, figure out who would fit. And then we're going to talk to them about the need and the reasons why, and then we're going to put it into our plan. Now, the other thing that I've done a few times with my patients as well, now that I do have some samples chair side is I'll give them the probiotic and I'll say at the end of my appointment, now, listen, I want you to try this probiotic here and you can literally administer it chair side for them to take home. When they're in the office, they'll feel it, they'll taste it, they'll have the right questions and I can answer all those things so they know what to expect when they continue that care at home. And so that has been an easy way for me to kind of bring it all together. Um, and then finally, we always need to evaluate, right? What's that last piece of that as pie is that evaluation piece. So how long do people need it? It really depends on them. It depends on the severity of their disease. It depends on the reasons that they're taking it. Some of my patients go from two lozenges a day to one lozenge a day just to help maintain. And that is really a personal choice and a, and a reason to go forward. But the recommendations is to at least be on it for a month. And I, like I said, I like to have my patients on it for at least usually about three months to help really repopulate that bacteria, because this is just an adjunct. Go ahead, Kat. Carrie, do they just dissolve it in their mouth or can they, do they put it in their cheek or is it just put it in your mouth, let it dissolve? That's it. I put mine in my mouth and I let it dissolve. Sometimes it ends up on my cheek. Sometimes it's on my tongue. If I'm slightly I always am moving around, but the key thing is I try not to chew it because I just want it to sort of literally just dissolve as we're going through. Like one of the questions was the group that had half of their mouth mm -hmm. um, with the treatment and then the oral probiotics and then the other half, just the treatment. So how did they manage to do that? Because one half, one half of the mouth had scaling and root planing, and then the whole mouth was exposed to the probiotic. Okay. Yeah. And so that's where they could see the differences in, in that aspect. And so, um, but this is just an adjunct, right? It's not to take away from anything else. It's an added on to an option. So if you're really trying to push out those periopathogens, if you're trying to rebalance that biofilm, if you're trying to help shift it from dysbiosis to symbiosis, this is a great way to kind of add on to, add on to the program. And if somebody had rampant decay, perhaps you would keep them, could they stay on it for life or is it just, you're only on it for the short term? Um, I think it really is, again, it's indications for them. You've got to look at um, the the risk. I I haven't seen any long-term studies that say it's, it's there's concern with staying on it long-term. I think it really is looking at the indications for that, that individual. Um, but I, like I said, I, I think that it would be a good product to use for good 
for promoting good biofilm long-term. So if you're into that healthy section, some people take gut probiotics to keep them healthy, not to fight disease. And so right. once you get yourself into that symbiosis, into that healthy state, it is a good practice to keep going. It's like we exercise, we lose weight, we get our muscle toned, and then we can't just stop exercising. We have to keep going and keep that routine. That routine may be different. Maybe it's not, you know, having to water floss twice a day. Maybe it's having to water floss once a day. Maybe it's just sort of changing it up and also diet and lifestyle. Like Beth, you, you talk about nutrition all the time. And so, you know, it's about balancing it all and, and bringing in some of those parts. Absolutely. And I like that you brought that up, right? And because some people, even if maybe there was an indication, I mean, if you did think I want this patient to take this for life, they might not be willing to, or they might not want to. So I love that you've just given us a lot to think about in the different scenarios that could be at play, but there's it does, so there's so many things, right? <laughs> but it does thing. bring up, yeah, it does bring up, you know, potential side effects. Cause I know gut oral probiotics do come with some maybe more significant, but I know there's just a couple with the oral probiotics. Do you want to touch on that just a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So I think that that is something definitely we want to uh, be aware of. And so some of the uh, warning and concerns, definitely it can have a laxative effect. Um, and sometimes that can be diarrhea, um, but it doesn't often happen with this product. If somebody is concerned, what I've said to my patients is to start with one a day and then go to two a day because that way then they can ensure that that's not going to be an issue for them. One of the other contraindications for this product is that if they are immune compromised, such as like AIDS or lymphoma, they suggest that you do not use this product. And so um, in those situations, I would consult with their physician and, and kind of uh, ensure that the patient uh, spoke to them before consuming. But if there is a concern, if the patient is is worried that they will have a laxative effect, none of my patients have had any. Um, but then what I've said to them again is breaking down. We'll start with one and then you can go to two a day and see if there's any issues that way. Um, the other thing is uh, one of the other common questions that comes up is does it have to be refrigerated? And these do not have to be refrigerated. They are in a pill form. They do not have to go into the refrigerator at all. Hmm. That's good. So the one thing I'm seeing right now is it's, it's bringing up quite a few questions. It's, it's such a huge topic and there's so much to unpack. There's so much to learn. And I think that's sometimes what we like to do with the RDHP, right? Is we like to bring up a topic by no means, are we going to be able to completely, you know, unsolve all the mysteries, but it's very clear that people want more. So what else can they do to kind of increase their knowledge um, and, and comfort in this, in this uh, subject? I think that the key thing is to to do your research, to kind of look at some of the studies, do like Google, Google L Ruteri, Google oral probiotics, see what's out there. Um, the other thing is, is that BioGaia now actually has lunch and learns and opportunities that you can kind of have someone come and give you some information. It's all done virtually. Um, and as well as they will be at ODA, at PDC, at CDHA. So please, you know, stop in and see them at the booths. I actually will be at PDC and ODA with them, just helping kind of give information, answer some of the, the questions that way. Um, and I think that that is really um, the, the, net, the notion of it. I think that this is one of those topics that is newer to dentistry. And the key thing I have found I like to use the word oral probiotics, but one of the other words I use now is lozenge, lozenge probiotics. And then the patient's like, oh, I don't take a lozenge. Well, what's different about that? And I say, well, this is specific for your mouth and the gut one's specific for your gut. And so we want to cleanse the top of the mouth, not worry about what's happening at the bottom end of this. Okay. We want to look at the, the oral aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that those are some options to, um, to get started, do some research, read some articles, reach out to BioGaia uh, Canada, and they will offer um, information sessions. If there are any friends that are joining us from the U.S., uh, BioGaia U.S. also does have the information sessions. So they'll be happy to uh, offer those for you as well. Mm -hmm. And I like calling them dental probiotics too, because that's, I think for like when people hear the oral probiotics, they do think, oh, I do, I do take that. Like, like Beth was saying earlier. So I think that's great. Um, yeah. So do you want me to share how to get these samples and yeah. Yeah. Cause one That'd of the great. things is like when you were talking about adding it to your treatment plan is I really think that this is one of those things that it's better to have on hand. You know, instead of saying you should be on and then sending them out and having them look for it themselves. So I think having the um, the samples on hand is a wonderful idea. 
and having them try it when they're there with you is great too, Carrie. Um, and then yes. I saw some people say, oh, I found it on Amazon. So yes, you can get it on Amazon. I think mm -hmm. Walmart as well. Um, but the idea is if you wanted to get them for your practice, you can order them, you can get the um, samples delivered to your practice, but then you can order from Hansamed and Hansamed deals with dental professionals. So you're going to get that special discount, right? So let me just share this with you. Um, hang on one sec. And while you're doing that, there's a question that came in about, are we able to uh, recommend these or, you know, does the doctor have to diagnose something? And this is one of those things that I feel based on our clinical assessment. If you've done that assessment, you can't just sort of say everybody needs it. There's got to be a purpose. Okay. Not everybody needs everything that we have on our tray, but if you do your assessment and the data is pointing towards this could be beneficial, then yes, we are allowed to recommend it uh, for our patients. But we, again, we have to have that clinical data. We have to have that backing behind it. The doctors can back us up and can be the people that start that conversation. But us as, as registered dental hygienists are able to make these recommendations. And Carrie, you would recommend this after treatment, right? You wouldn't do it like while you're doing active therapy. Um, it, again, it depends on the, depends on the individual. I think that if we see that there's disease, I don't see the harm in starting it right away. It just depends on all the other tools that are on that tray. So sometimes I may do it after, but sometimes I may be part of my, I'm starting them on, on SRPs. I'm starting them on, on, on therapy. So part of our therapy is to utilize this instantly. So I think it's really piece specific and again, again, depending on the severity of the disease. Very good. All right. Okay. You want me to share? Yes, please. Right. Share screen. And there was just a question that came in if this is only available in Ontario, but this was available in the U.S. for quite some time and it is now right across Canada. It's available. So what is coming up? We have our next uh, show, the RDH View, on Friday, May 3rd. And who is our guest that day, Carrie? Julie Friesen? Yep. Yep. Okay. Julie's coming. Okay. So we'll share more information about that. Um, and I want to thank um, Carrie and Beth for putting together such a wonderful presentation today and to um, BioGaia for sponsoring this session. We're really excited to be working with you. Um, so placing an order is super easy. Um, like I said, you can get the samples. So we do have a QR code coming up so you can order samples for your practice. They come in the two great flavors, mint and apple. Um, and then we also have, so this is the scan for the sample. So I'll keep that up for a second. Um, and then in the follow-up email that will be sent out Monday or Tuesday, we will include a direct link as well. So don't worry if you miss this, um, it will be sent in the follow-up email. And this is the lovely Shannon Howe, who is the um, periodontal health account manager with Hansamed. So you can always reach out to Shannon if you have any questions. Uh, she is a dental hygienist, so she can help you you know, with, with any questions, um, they, they have a special on, and typically they do have specials every month. So for March, it's buy 10, get 30% off and buy 20, get 40% off. So sure, you can send your patients out to get their own through Amazon. But to me, I think it'd be great to have, first of all, have the samples on hand and then have some of the products on hand as well so that they can purchase them, them from you. Then I'll just share a little bit as well as what's coming up with our um, upcoming free one hour webinar, again with Carrie Lepicek, um, Dental Probiotics, the time to implement is now. So that is coming up. I have the date on the next slide, but you can scan that to register. And I will include the link as well in the follow-up email that we'll send next week. But um, this is it here. So it's Thursday, March 28th from seven. 
I left it open. It's from 7 to 8 p.m. <laughs> it's a one hour webinar. So for our Ontario members, you can use today as a great, um, you know, if, if you can make oral probiotics a goal for you, you can do a one hour for today as one of your learning activities. You can take um, our, our course on the Thursday, March 28th from 7 to 8. You can use that as an activity. Lorraine Gambacore has a course coming up in June where she's talking about oral probiotics as well. And then, you know, throughout the year, we always have different programs that are included like that are part of that that topic so whenever you can find that extra layer of, of learning on oral probiotics um, the studies perhaps Carrie we can send the studies out mm -hmm. um, a link to the yeah. studies would be great all right um, and then just to talk a little bit about what's coming up all all around for RDHU we have our myofunctional therapy program um, it is filling up quite nicely. So if you are thinking about it, um, now's the time to register. We do have a payment plan. So you can start, you know, with your payment plan now to get you ready for the actual program. And then we have ortho programs with Lisa Moore. Um, she has so many different programs now through us, uh, the fundamentals, advanced ortho, digital. And then we have all these different bundles that you can purchase if you're interested in more than one. It's good to get the bundle. You can save some money and have a really great um, learning activity to help you in your practice. And then we have um, Dr. Joy uh, coming to our to RDHU as a mini conference on Saturday, April 6th or Sunday, April 7th. It's a full day hands-on workshop. It's going to be a fabulous day. I know um, Dr. Joy is loved by many Canadians and by our US friends as well. So if you would like to spend a day with us here, Beth and I will be here as well with her. We're really looking forward to this day. Um, and then of course we have our live streaming courses uh, for March. We have Dr. Sanj with the dental sealants, Anna Louise doing a national best practice for documentation and also the challenges for implant care that's in March. And then Christine Crawford with the ABCs of classification and then Carrie, what's new in Carrie's management. So Carrie, will you be sharing oral probiotics in that program? Yeah, there I will for sure. Another, another layer of learning. All right, and then for 2024, our Dental Hygiene Quarterly, uh, we just finished recording for the spring edition and that will be launching mid-March. We're super excited. Um, we have um, a bunch of really great um, dental professionals that Beth and I met when we were in Finland last June, um, visiting with the LM um, Dental Facility and they invited us for this wonderful um, event. There was 15 of us from all over the world. So, we thought we want to share these people with our members. So uh, we have Tatiana Brandt from Copenhagen. She just recorded on our kidney patients and then managing anxiety within ourselves and our patients with Ryan Reuter. So I know he is loved by many and so is Tatiana. So we're really excited and that should be coming out mid-March. And then just a thank you to all of you for being a part of RDHU. Um, if you registered and you're not part of RDHU, what will happen is we will you will become part of RDHU automatically because you registered for this. Don't feel that you have to stay with us. We hope you do, but you can always unsubscribe if you are only here for today. Um, but otherwise, you are now part of our community, which we love. And there's about 20,000 of us. So um, we just love doing what we do. And um, I love what I do. I get to work with these wonderful um uh, people here who are my dearest friends and uh, just feel so fortunate. So uh, just thank you so much for being a party, part of RDHU. And uh, we're all about transforming the dental hygiene experience for you for the as, as the clinician, for your clients, your patients, and for your practice. So thank you so much. And that is it from me. Thank you, Kath. There was, we have like three minutes left. So there was a couple of questions. Let's just see if we can get through um, a few of them. Rapid fire. Here we go. Rapid fire. There was a lot coming in just awesome. about the, the ingredients and allergy concerns. So definitely yep. if that's a concern of yours, look up the BioGaia ProDentist and they'll give you a full list of ingredients. It is sweetened by uh, xylitol. That's the sweetener. It's gluten-free, lactose-free and milk protein-free. So if that satisfies some of those questions, but definitely, um, look into it for yourself and get the full list of their ingredients. 
And there's an rin there's a question here about utilizing an antibiotic uh, or an antibacterial rinse uh, with probiotics. So if it's an antibiotic rinse, I would have them utilize the antibiotic rinse until it's finished. And then at the completion of that, implement the oral probiotic is generally how I would do that. I probably wouldn't use them together. I would finish the one treatment and then go to the next one. Right. And, and a very also expensive uh, <laughs> sink residue, right? It's just, if it's antibacterial, it's going to kill. It's same thing yeah. with rinses, right? Be, be wary of rinses and when you're using them, because if you're using a, an antibiotic, an antibacterial rinse, and then immediately following you take your oral probiotic, it could be killing off some of the good with the bad. Exactly. Exactly. Um, what other questions have come in? The co we've gone through the cost. Um, there is no, in Ontario, there isn't a bill, a code to bill for it. It's one of those things that you would sell your patients at the price that, you know, speaking from Ontario perspective, you would sell it at the price that you got it. Uh, Handsome Ed right now does have a really great uh, special on with the 30 and 40% off. So instead of it being $30, you can almost get it for 14, uh, almost $15 in change. And That's so that fun. itself is so cheap. We Beth and I actually were on a webinar um, talking about probiotics um, that was put on by Handsome Ed just this week. And um, it was fascinating because this periodontist incorporated into the treatment plan. So if they were going through complex care, they were having multiple appointments, multiple things. It was just part of the treatment. They just, they just absorbed the $30 price, let's say point for the box of lozenges. So that way then the patient had all the tools they needed to be successful with the care that they were providing. So, um, there's lots of, lots of different options that way. It's mm, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, ladies. I look forward to seeing if you guys are at PDC, please stop by. I know Anna Louise is speaking, Beth is speaking. So please support them. Make sure that you are in their rooms. The rooms will be sold out anyway. I know Anna Louise, you're doing hands-on. Uh, Beth, you're speaking with Danny, um, doing a lecture. Um, if you see us on the floor, Kathleen will be at the LM, um, the Curion booth that Curion. way. Yep. Uh, Anna Louise will be hanging around Hugh Freedy. And like I said, I'll be at the BioGaia. So please come and see us. We would love to meet you guys face to face. And thank you, everybody. We hope that you have a wonderful day and we're taking April off and we'll see you in May. Perfect. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.